Okay, hello. Uh, I wanted to create a video on how we think about application architecture uh, at Code Sandbox. We're having some new stuff coming up ahead, and I wanted to create a video that doesn't concentrate on code, but more conceptually how we think about application architecture. And so this is uh, for anyone within the team or anyone else who, who doesn't actually do coding. And like the first thing that uh, developers tends to go to when thinking about app application architecture is, okay, what framework are we going to use for this? And for us, it was basically between uh, two different choices. Um, we have we have a lot of like uh, we have a lot of experience building code sandbox now, and we have identified quite a few things that we really want to get control of. So we did a proof of concept of our own uh, state management tool, which also had a, a, a visual component to it, which is kind of what Code Sandbox is about, uh, using more visual tools. Uh, but uh, it had like a very opinionated, uh, uh, like it had its own paradigm, meaning that it was based on creating classes, it's object oriented and so on. And then we have like the existing UI part, like we're using React. And the question is like, do we put something on top of React or do we actually use React itself for our application architecture? And it has not always been, like, like there's a reason why there's so many application uh, logic abstractions on top of React. And that is because React hasn't really had like the primitives to, to effectively like build complex applications. But that's a, that has changed a lot. And the funny thing is that React doesn't have any specific way of writing applications. It just has some really good primitives. And then it's up to you to kind of create a pattern on top of that. So it's not an explicit API. It's more of a pattern. So that's what we're embracing now, because there's no way we're going to move away from React. And for new developers, it's easier for them to uh, get into the application architecture when we just have some patterns on top of React that is based on like normal React primitives. So uh, let's talk about that. So typically for React, you have this thing called a component. This is what you're introduced to. And a component is a very uh, powerful concept. It has a piece of UI. It can express application logic. It has state, and uh, it can also, uh, of course, use side effects. So typically, this is called like an authentication component. So you can imagine having like uh, a login, where the UI would be, for example, a login button. And when you click that button, that triggers some logic, which authenticates the user. And it needs to use a side effect for that. The, because it needs to, for example, talk to a server. So that's that's the side effect. And when it gets that user back, it updates the state. And now you can, for example, use the name of the user and show that in the UI. Now, this is really cool. Uh, but the problem with this is that it's like isolated. It's almost like this authentication component is an application in itself. So the first pattern that arises is that we need to split this up because we want this user to be used by any component uh, if they need to access it. So that means that we uh, create a new component, uh, which in this case is called an authentication feature. You might call it container, provider, it doesn't matter. But the purpose of this component is that it, uh, it only uh, holds the logic, the side effects and the state for doing this authentication. Oh, that looks like shit. There we go. And so the state might look like something, uh, might look something like this. Is authenticating false? Uh, we have a user there, maybe. Uh, we might have an error re related to the authentication. And this is something that any component, including, including the authentication component, can use. And then the UI still has access to, in this case, called the authenticate. Um, call authenticate to, to run the authentication logic with the side effects and everything. Okay, uh, so that's that's good. Uh, uh, and that's a, a great move for the uh, like the first step of a, of a pattern, but there are some issues here. So 
the issue is more how we uh, express state. So in the example above, we didn't have any explicit state, meaning that uh, at any point, like we might have a user there, we might not have a user. Uh, one component might look at like, do we have a user here? Okay, then we're authenticated. And then some other uh, other component might look at, oh, is authenticating is false? Uh, and there's no error, okay, then we have a user. Like, it's up to the component to interpret, do we have a user or are we authenticated or are we not authenticated? And it has to use these state values to kind of figure out what, are we authenticated? Um, it's not explicit. And so the next pattern is that we put a tiny little abstraction on top of our state called explicit states. And it basically just uh, changes how the state is expressed so that we have a, a property called state. And this says that now we're unauthenticated, now we're authenticating, now we're authenticated, and then we actually have the user, or we have an error, and then we actually have an error. Uh, and this makes... Um, the this makes the ui implementation way more consistent it knows exactly it needs to check the state to figure out if it's authenticated if it's authenticated we know that we have a user like it's impossible to not have a user there and this might seem like a silly thing but this is the biggest mistake we're doing in our applications today is that we don't have explicit states um and there are other benefits um that these explicit states also gives us. Um, it gives us the, um, whenever we build some piece of UI based on, for example, authentication, it helps us to, to notify about, are we actually expressing all the different states? Meaning that if you were to like, uh, well, render the authentication component, what you would do is that you would point to the explicit states of the, authentication feature and it will uh, force you to define what do you want to render when unauthenticated what do you want to render when authenticating what do you want to render when authenticated and so on and that just ensures that every piece of ui that uses a feature they are forced to deal with every single state that feature can be in and that makes our ui way more predictable uh, but there's still uh, an issue here. Like the UI can still just implement a button, trigger some logic, and that logic will run even though it's not valid. So an example of that would be when we're authenticated, there's no reason to run authenticate again. And running that again might do something weird to our state. We might be put into some state that's that's actually not valid. So to deal with that, we do not uh, we do not actually allow the components to directly manipulate the logic. The only thing the UI is uh, allowed to do is something we call a dispatch. So the dispatch actually goes into the state first, and then these, uh, this concept of explicit state checks is this authenticate actually valid now? So what it would express is like, okay, we are in the unauthenticated state and we are receiving an authenticate dispatch. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the authenticating state. That's a valid state transition, as we call it. Uh, and that's the only thing the UI can do. They're not allowed to trigger explicit logic. They can only uh, ask for an intention. And then it's up to the explicit states to move from one state to the next, depending if this dispatch it actually is valid for the current state. And what happens then is that the logic doesn't drive the state, but the logic is reactive to the state. So what would happen here in practice is that we pass in this intent of authenticating, like uh, we dispatch on uh, authenticate, it sees that, okay, we are unauthenticated now, we should deal with this uh, dispatch. It moves over into an authenticating state, 
And that is something our logic reacts to. It sees that, oh, we changed into an authenticating state now. Let me go and deal with uh, some stuff related to that, which is talking to the server. And then uh, the logic will dispatch back into the um, explicit states that, okay, now we have a successful authentication uh, and the explicit states uh, checks, is this something I want to deal with now? In this case, it is, and it moves into authenticated. So the point is that instead of the UI just firing off logic and the logic driving the state, the UI can only dispatch intents, and then it's the state that drives the logic. So it's reverse. And this makes things way more predictable. Uh, and that's like a huge improvement and uh, like puts another pattern on top, which, which uh, makes things way more predictable. But there is a last piece to this. And that is our authentication feature uh, now it, it knows too much about its environment. Uh, it knows about how to do like requests to the server. Maybe it uses some tool for that. And that makes it very difficult to test that authentication feature. So the last piece of this puzzle is that we actually uh, expose an environment. So conceptually, you think about your application being put inside an environment. And it uses what we call a common interface. Uh, and this common interface describes what the application needs from the environment. So an example of that would be with the authentication feature, well, it needs to be able to sign in, for example. That is something that happens in the surrounding environment. It's not something that happens in the actual authentication feature. Um, so uh, sign in would be uh, a common interface. And then we are able to implement, OK, for production, when we call sign in, we will talk to our uh, production uh, server endpoint and run the sign-in process and return the result of that. When we're in development, we might uh, just mock that. Maybe there's a hard-coded user that will be resolved when, um, when running that side effect. But it's the same interface. So the authentication feature doesn't know about the, what environment it's running from. It just cares about this common interface. And then for the test, this, uh, um, this sign-in uh, uh, interface might be put behind like a, a mocking implementation. So you're actually able to like uh, create a specific sign-in uh, for a specific test. So one test, you might return uh, a user. On another test, you might throw an error. On a third test, you might uh, return like um, a user who doesn't have an email, for example. Like you create, uh, you mock the interface. That's the point. Uh, and what this has enabled us to do now is basically test the feature in isolation. So you don't have to write any UI. You don't have to, um, to do any uh, crazy stuff to deal with side effects. You just write a test, and the test basically puts the authentication feature in one of its explicit states. Then you trigger something in the environment, or you trigger um, a dispatch from the test. And, that, and, and at the end of the test, you just check, did I move to the correct state now? So an example of that would be, OK, we want to test a sign-in. OK. so we. Uh, fire up the authentication feature in a test uh, in the unauthenticated, uh, unauthenticated state. We dispatch authenticate, and we have mocked our sign-in effect to return a user. And the only thing we need to do in that test now is to wait for it to get authenticated and check if the user is the user that was returned from our mocked effect. So that scopes down um, our testing to something that's very approachable. And then we're able to also test our UI if we want to do that. And in that case, we, we can mock the whole feature, right? 
we don't need to drive any logic. We just see that, okay, in these specific states, does the UI look the way we want it to look like? There's no logic, no side effects. It's only these explicit states um, that you can uh, uh, that you can test the UI on. So um, uh, yeah, so this is basically the patterns we use to create uh, like the application architecture for for the code sandbox applications. We'll share more about this uh, as we move on. And um, yeah, excited to to show you more some more stuff, and uh, excited to to see React being at a place where you can actually uh, do very little uh, abstractions to actually get a really really powerful uh, architecture for like the goal is predictable user experiences. That's the whole goal. So yeah, I hope this made sense. Thanks. Bye.